All right, I'd like to call Chris William Martin up. From college in Ottawa, Canada, for those of you who don't know where Ottawa is, um, and has been published in a range of books and periodicals, including the Public Journal of Sem Semiotics. He also volunteers at a local tattoo studio and art gallery. His paper is entitled, Body Art as Personal and Cultural Anchors, the Social Semiotics of Tattooing. Please welcome Chris. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you very much to uh, the team. This is the coolest hotel that I'll probably ever stay in in my life. I mean that. Uh, I've, I've been taking pictures of everything, and uh, so because it's very cool, so I really appreciate it. I appreciate all your attention as well. So uh, uh, you've all probably guessed the first moment you saw me uh, that I'm the tattoo guy. I'm going to be presenting on the tattoos. That's true. Uh, I am, and it's in fact, it's a huge part of my life. Uh, so I've been getting tattooed for over 12 years. I've been studying the practice for uh, eight years, and I worked over uh, a year full-time in a tattoo studio in dual roles as a receptionist and a cultural ethnographer. But in that whole process, what I was trying to do is really uh, do the most honest sociology that I could, and in doing so, I just kept coming into uh, problems of meaning. Uh, what, what do these tattoos mean to the people who are getting them, who are devoting their skin and their, their time and pain to it? Why are they getting these tattoos? And uh, what I found is social semiotics is absolutely the best, it provides the best set of tools to really dig into something like meaning. So, um, but first let's, uh, you know, M McLuhan is actually on Google right now, uh, so if you look at Google, uh, it's McLuhan in the middle, so it's pretty cool, as you say, it's his birthday. And it fits really well into tattooing because uh, tattooing is a medium uh, which is at once visceral, painful, and indelible, and it speaks, one tattoo speaks to people, places, aesthetics, and a multitude of other markers of personhood and culture. And like other social, cultural, and personal practices, some of which we've talked about, uh, one must be caref careful to avoid these initial habits of bias and appeal to a more empirical view in order to truly appreciate the depths of both the content and the form. So like Marianne, I feel like tattoos are one of those, you know, toys that she un unwrapped to get to those different layers. Tattoos are the perfect uh, tool to unwrap as well. So, uh, but what drives, what, what drives a little big part of my research and drives, I think, a lot of meaning for all of us is this theory that I use, it's uh, liquid modernity comes from the sociologist Zygmunt Bauman, who died earlier this year. Uh, and this theory of liquid modernity says uh, we're all living this liquid life, which is uh, impermanent, ephemeral. Uh, we're all waiting for the newest, best thing. We all, for example, have these throwaway products. We use them once, they go, and that's it. Uh, you know, and even we're basically looking for some change. We're always looking for change. In fact, he talks about how uh, you know, for example, that mobile phone that we all have, it'll become, it'll become not only a source of misery, but a source of shame as soon as the new one comes out. Uh, so you, how, how is it that more and more people are becoming tattooed in this world, in this liquid modern world in which, as uh, Ed pointed out earlier, easy is better. Tattoos aren't easy. And Professor Denazi, uh, when he was presenting yesterday, really struck a chord with me. He was talking about uh, how no one carries books anymore books, these symbols of your individuality that you have to really commit to. You have to go to a store and, and look through and commit and you say, I'm going to have this book and I'm going to carry it with me. It's not easy to carry. And it's, he's right, but I feel tattoos are filling that void. Tattoos are these things that you go through a lot of trouble to carry with you, to carry that sense of your individuality. And this is sort of what I'm going to talk about. Um, well, let me give you the statistics first. 40% of millennials have a tattoo. 21% of all American adults have one. Uh, these are American figures. 1.65 billion is spent annually on the practice, and uh, a whole bunch of people in this room have tattoos. Uh, some of the presenters, and uh, it's cool. I, I mean, it's cool because this this venue, this conference, this is the first time I felt uh, sort of welcome presenting tattoos at an academic conference. So I think it's cool. Um, so as I said, why the rise of tattoos in an impermanent world? Well, one of these answers that I found is that, well, we're all using our bodies to express ourselves. That's, how, that's what our bodies do. They express our, our individuality, our, our emotion, whatever. And tattoos are using a key tenant of that. In fact, what I found is people are using uh, tattoos as a rebellion from the superficiality of the liquid modern world. I found a lot of people saying they're not getting tattooed in spite of permanence. They're actually getting tattooed because it's permanent. 
And what they're doing is they're mapping out their lives in the tattoos. They become anchors, these permanent anchors in the construction and representation of meaning. So I asked, I asked Terry yesterday what his tattoos meant. And uh, Latin, you know, with very coded meaning, no, no one, none of us is going to be able to read it and, under, and know right away, oh, I know what that means. No one can read Latin. Um, but when he told me, I realized it's a huge part of your life. You say it, 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 it's, it's, it maps out your sense of identity and it keeps, keeps you grounded, right, as an anchor. And so these, uh, these terms mapping and anchoring are huge uh, concepts for tattoo enthusiasts. So here's one that we're going to talk about, and it's a Canadian example, which I think is cool for some of you who are new to Canada here. Um, this is a, a, an enthusiast. She's in her early 50s, and uh, she has these kind of uh, photorealism skates tattooed on her, uh, on her arm. And so in her words, what she says is, the story behind this tattoo is, uh, of the skates is that my dad died on me two years ago, and because everyone else around me had already passed, my aunts, uncles, and grandparents, I wanted to get something to remember him by. My dad is my hero and my saving grace, and so I thought to myself, I'd like to get something to represent him properly. So you have that one side of meaning. But then, he's, then she says, well, when I was little, I really wanted to play hockey, but I lived in Barrie, and there was no hockey for girls. So I would go and watch my brother play with my dad. But my dad and I would play road hockey together, and eventually he volunteered to be a girls' hockey coach so we could finally play. Then she says, so to honor him, I got the skates, but as tattoo enthusiasts usually do, they add in another layer into it. So she gets her father's badge number, uh, you know, because he was the longest serving police officer in Ontario at the time when he retired. So she gets his badge number and puts that in there as well. And she, this is the part that uh, it hit me, because this is one of the, the last interviews I was doing. And I, after working in a year in a tattoo studio, speaking with all kinds of tattoo enthusiasts, eventually I stopped really caring what they were saying to me. Be honest with you, I'm, I'm listening to what they're saying and I'm recording it. But when she, uh, there's some moments that really struck me and made an impact on me, and this was one, and she said, Sometimes I kiss my tattoo and I miss my dad and this is my connection to him. Every time I look at it, I think of him and I can carry this with me forever. And uh, she sort of teared up and there was, there was that sense of authenticity in, in what she was saying and it, again, the forever bit. It was that forever. And, you know, and then uh, at the same time I'm reading uh, articles in, the, in uh, you know, a newspaper saying, oh, it, will the red hot tattoo uh, art uh, or fad fade? Will it fade away? Or is it just a trend? And, you know, there's, yes, there's this mainstream element of tattoos, but there's also this deeper sense of the reason to get tattooed. And this was one of those examples. But what I find really neat about it is this. Hockey uh, is Canada's national pastime. So, you know, Tim Hortons, uh, maple syrup, these are Canadian staples, but so is hockey. Yet, Helen, a Canadian, could not play hockey. And even today, hockey is one of these sports that is completely male-dominated. Uh, ice time and media attention. And hockey is, is a male sport. So there's still that gender disproportionate uh, sense of structural inequality within a sport like hockey. So what I see in Helen's personal story is one in which she's constructed a life later as a semi-professional athlete herself. Uh, then she went into a career as a physical education teacher where she could push forth uh, you know, others and sort of inspire others who wanted to play sports, and sort of re, re, reframe the sense of what our culture and what women can do in sport and what women can do in terms of athlete, athleticism. So within one tattoo, we go back to it, a lot of us might see a tattoo and we say, oh yeah, okay. But within one tattoo, we have these cultural shifts within Canadian senses of identity in terms of hockey. We have gender uh, inequality. We also have memorialism for, uh, you know, uh, we also have police officer badge. All of these different layers, again, like the, like the toy there, uh, you can pick it apart, but it takes time. It, and it takes patience, but what you get from that is really a much richer sense of meaning. I guess that's the whole point of semiotics is meaning. It's, you know, as Professor Ruzak says, it's everything which is interesting. But finding what's interesting is not easy. And it, it won't be easy, but it'll be worth it because what you find is this deeper sense. And um, meanwhile, at the same time, this is the part that I like too because I always sort of bring in what's happening in the tattoo world. And for us to be able to see a lot of the highly sophisticated tattoos we're seeing nowadays, it means that tattooing itself as, a, as an occupation, as a profession, is going through this stage called artification. So you'll see, you see, we saw this in film and music and 
and the circus, uh, you know, there's this sense that things become artistic. And so Professor Buizak has a cool quote that he says, indeed an artist in whatever specialty has to prove what he or she can do before enjoying the recognition by the audience of the status which has been acquired through the performance of exceptional feats. And so all of those meanings we've already discussed, also you add on top of that, this photorealism that we see in Helen's tattoo is an example of where the tattoo world is going and how it's flexing its artistic muscles. So tattooing as, it's, as, as a whole genre is becoming more art, artified. And so therefore, another reason why people are willing to do something so permanent in an impermanent world. Um, so what does Helen, Helen's language tell us? Tattoos are often chosen as a permanent and durable form to carry some of the most precious content relating to self-identity. And since meaning needs language for translation, I say tattooing becomes that language. Ink skin is everywhere. But let's not be so quick to judge those that enter worlds we know a little about before taking the time to gaze at the ink, the person, and the society largely to begin to get at the meanings of the tattoo, just to begin to get at it. So tattoos and tattooing are indeed becoming more mainstream in terms of their frequency, their designs, and their cultural and art world acceptance via that artification. But this does not mean the meanings are any less significant, significant coded and that the practice should be taken lightly. Permanence, cultural change, and the ambivalence each of us face in liquid modernity and other sociological themes are represented and sometimes directly resisted through forms of bodily ex expression like tattoos. And last point, social semiotics allows readers to experience shifts in culture and personal discourses and an infinite amount of other potential meanings while also talking things like tattoo design, bodily expression, self-identity, it does so through an appreciation of that relationship between language, meaning, and society in that three-body model. And that's what I love about it. It really gives, again, a practical tool, practical set of, of, of ideas about how to take apart something like the meaning of tattoos. It's, it wouldn't be an easy feat without all of these people uh, before us saying, well, here, you know, let's get at meaning. Let's really try to dig into it. So I'll end with a, a pop culture example that happened, and I sort of, because I, I like it, because when I was reading about it, it sort of, uh, it, it, again, it re-inspired me, but it also, it sort of made me feel, well, maybe I'm onto something. So this was the case in Manchester uh, of the, uh, that horrific attack there at the, uh, the pop concert of the, the young performer, uh, Ariana Grande. And so uh, in the wake of that attack, you had all these tattoo parlors in Manchester, and they, were, they started this huge fundraising effort to say, we'll tattoo a B on you in solidarity for Manchester, and uh, you know, uh, all the proceeds will go to the victims of the attack. And what's cool about that is, what could you do for fundraising? You could do an infinite amount of things. I mean, usually it's a, you know, live strong, or uh, you know, some sort of a, a disposable, another disposable one-off thing. But these were permanent, indelible uh, images. And what was cool about it is, um, you know, you look at quotations. There was one from the BBC, and it was this, uh, this young woman, 22. And she says, uh, it's a nice way of showing support for the victims, their families, and to remember them forever, not just now. I didn't know how else to, support, uh, to offer my support. Facebook and Instagram are good, but this will be on me forever, not just words that you'll see on a screen. Now, what I like about it is this, th that B is not going to mean the same thing forever to these people. It's not, they're not going to always you know, ha be in that moment. It's going to take on new meanings over time. That's the, that's the beauty of meaning. It's a slippery object. That's why we love it. That's why it's interesting. Uh, that B won't mean the same thing forever. It doesn't even mean the same thing to anybody who's getting it. But nonetheless, this is, just shows the importance of tattooing in, in an impermanent world. People are getting it because it's permanent, because it has such significance, because it has such weight. Uh, and through the tattoo, uh, you can really map out your life. And as it changes, it, they change with you. And, uh, and that's, that's the whole part of it. So I thank you very much for your time. And, uh, yeah. Thanks so much, Chris. That was lovely, and it was a lovely close reading of that tattoo. So, um, does it, I think we have time for one question. Um, uh, Matt Check. I actually wanted to subvert the hierarchy and ask a question myself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I just uh, uh, wanted to 
I'll show you afterwards some photos I got of tattoos uh, because there's a phenomena I run into recently. I don't know if you're if you're familiar with it, that people uh, during some uh, art exhibitions or parties do and like an on-spot tattooing mm -hmm. without you know uh, like like in some something like an instant tattoo you make without uh, any uh, putting much thought into it, and you usually have uh, like a very badly drawn, like a Pluto dog or Mickey Mouse or stuff like that. Looking, it looks like a you know draft sketch from some sort of a sketchbook. Yep. Uh, uh, I find it very, very interesting, and I was thinking about this uh, in terms of you know understanding body, but also understanding uh, tattooing in itself. Do you have some? Can you like comment on it because Absolutely. it's 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 quite interesting in terms of what you're saying here in, a, uh, in, a, in terms of, you know, anchoring and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the biggest questions I'm asked, I, I love it because, again, semiotics helps answer it, is a lot of people sometimes, and I, yeah, actually a professor uh, teaching deviance, and I said, stop teaching tattoos and deviance. I think she's thought 40% of your class have a tattoo. You should probably stop. But anyway, he was, and he said, you know, I've got a tattoo. It's a jo joke. It was a joke. And uh, how can you tell me it has meaning? You know, come on. It was, I got it when I, and, I, and I say, well, tell me more about it. I said, well, I got it with a bunch of my buddies. We were out, you know, uh, it was a graduation party. And as he goes on, he's giving me all kinds of rich meaning. And he's, and he's mapping out his life in front of me through that tattoo. And I say, well, you just told me what the meanings are. I'm not, I, my job is not to tell you what the meanings are. My job is to listen and, and try and represent them as much as possible. And sometimes the examples are deep and mean. And I actually, I, I really wrestled about which example I was going to give. That one was Canadian. It hits me. I, first, I had a guy who was a part of uh, this, mem uh, this uh, cult religion called the Temple of Set. Uh, it was a version of Satanism, and actually, he almost made me go to a meeting. I was kind of inspired. <laughs> my, my, my wife said, no, you're not joining the cult. But this guy had a PhD. He was, really, he was a really cool guy. So anyway, um, so I was going to use that example. But the point is, is, it doesn't matter what the meaning is. And if it's ridiculous, uh, for example, this one I told uh, uh, Olivia. Uh, uh, yesterday, yeah, she said, well, tell me about one of your tattoos. So I, I pick a fun one. This one was, uh, I was, at a tat I was at working at the tattoo studio, and the, one of the clients didn't show up, and they said, hey, I, uh, he said, hey, would you like a tattoo? And I was drinking Starbucks coffee, and on the cup was, uh, the, the, it was the fall cups. So it was a design of an acorn, and I said, uh, yeah, sure, give me this. It was on the cup. It was on the Starbucks cup. Now it's on my body. But you know what? A, it means a lot to me, because it reminds me of my buddy. It reminds me of working at a tattoo studio. Meaning is a slippery agent. That's what's so fun about it. And if it's a stupid draft on an art exhibit or a powerful symbol of memory, that's either way. It's awesome. So 